Myth number one. Muscle confusion. What? <laughs> so, so first of all. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. My muscles were too confused. <laughs> my muscles were so confused by that movement. I tried to press record, but they were too confused. So, so, so Mike, uh, I know this isn't I, I was just flipping somebody the bird. <laughs> I know this isn't your turn, but I'm going to ask you to define it anyways. I'm going to, I'm going to make you be the expert on muscle confusion. So, so what is muscle confusion purported to be? All right. So the whole idea that we hear about by muscle confusion, uh, I don't know. I started hearing about it probably 10 or 15 years ago where everybody was largely of the mindset that by constantly varying your motions uh, and doing it in a crazy erratic way by confusing your muscles, they will get bigger, smarter, stronger, harder, better, faster, all the wonderful things. Uh, but what I think that they were sort of ham handedly trying to say is that you were going to shift around the way that your your uh, your neuromuscular facilitation happened, that your muscles learned things and that they would adapt in a much more rapid way uh, and that they would. Uh, get harder, better, faster, stronger again because they were confused and just didn't know what was going to come at them. So they would grow in every possible direction at massive strength. And uh, it, it's sort of like the old GNC commercials where they would tell you that you would basically everything on the shelf was like legal steroids, right? So it was that kind of BS that you used to see. I, I so, did get my first bottle of androstein dione at a GNC, I'm just going to say, which was basically a legal steroid back when you know I was in high school and Mark McGuire was my hero. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually an ATC at the time that that was coming out. And uh, the one guy that was on it basically just got really odd hair growth patterns. <laughs> Is that correlated to why I no longer have hair? I don't know. We'll, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just. We're not talking about one. your palms, buddy. We're not talking about your palms. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I think this really gained traction. What with uh, P90X was really the was oh, really yeah. <laughs> the infomercial, right? That took the world by storm, and they purported muscle confusion was the key to the gains that their program provided, which which was really just like you said, a, a marketing term or a ham handed way of talking about uh, you know variants of load and variants of training methodology and variants of intensity. And so I will give them credit. One thing I will give them credit for one thing that that program actually did really well was appropriately undulate intensity throughout the week. They, they increased training frequency to, you know, five, six days a week because it was a, you know, a 90 day progressive overload program that was actually fairly well structured. Um, and it had some undulations built into it within the weeks. It had some periodization built into it over the course of 90 days. It had a ton of, a ton of different exercises in it, but the, the idea that your muscles were confused by this, uh, by not knowing what was coming next would prevent plateaus. That was kind of the message that they were telling you is like, oh, plateaus happen because your muscles know what's coming. So if you want to keep your gains going in perpetuity, you really need just to keep your muscles confused. They can never know what's coming, right? The idea. Yeah, that I'll, I'll tell you that unpredictability, man, my left delt is still in therapy for it. <laughs> Yeah, it's you got have trust a, issues now, man. It's just got trust issues. Yeah, yeah. That insecure attachment style. Uh, this is probably not the probably not the myth for you, right? <laughs> if you have an insecure attachment style, uh, we're 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 not going to recommend muscle confusion. But it's really it's it's honestly um, it's it's complete it's complete marketing. It is total it is total marketing. Variance is good. Variability is good, especially if you have a personality type that's like uh, you know a squirrel on a pixie stick. Uh, you know, as I like to say about us ADHD people, you know, it can be good if it, if it increases your adherence to training. And obviously the idea that, you know, varying things and different movements and different styles that there are some good sound principles there. You don't want to work in the same plane of motion. You don't want to work in the same pattern. You need to hit all the major patterns, but also you want to do it in a structured way that is predictable. And we all know that skill acquisition actually happens by repetition. So not the act, the actual opposite of what they're saying. If you actually want to get strong, um, like when I was my strongest, guess what I did? I benched, I deadlifted, and I squatted because that's what my sport required. And I was trying to get as maximally strong as possible. So if you talk to a power lifter, they do those movements in, yes, in different intensities and maybe some different variations, but we're not trying to confuse our muscles. We were trying to actually make the, the patterns very, very predictable so that your brain could learn how do I move this super heavy weight 
in a predictable way, right? So uh, the idea of muscle confusion does not align well with top level performance or adaptation or predictability. Um, are there really any benefits to that level of variability that they're talking about? So I would tend to say, you know, and, and, and this is one of the things that we actually see a lot in CrossFit, right, that really espouses that constantly varied kind of a model. Uh, but uh, one of the things that you sort of see is that they've been often accused within CrossFit and also within certain similar training, you know, cross training kind of modalities uh, that uh, that constantly varied sort of seems to be confused, if you will, with uh, uh, with random. Uh, and, and it's very much not that at all. It, it's very, very programmed, but it is that sort of undulating periodicity. Uh, but the, the thing that sort of gets lost when you start talking about things like muscle confusion is that the muscles are going to move better. They are going to move more consistently. Your skill is going to get improved. Uh, through efficiency, and that efficiency comes through repetition, uh, through uh, bringing that that training pattern into uh, a habitual movement, uh, and, and it doesn't necessarily mean that every single day you have to do the exact same thing. Quite quite the contrary, right? Uh, you, you do need to be hitting things in multi points. You do need to be hitting things in varying loads. You do need to be hitting things uh, in varying levels of volume. Uh, but at the end of the day. People sort of use that marketing term of muscle confusion to, to mean just throw random crap into your workout and hope to God that you get swole. And, and it just doesn't happen, right? I mean, it's like you look around at people who are working the floor in the gym and they're just kind of wandering around aimlessly because they read whatever they saw from uh, Instabud influencers that week and they're doing it. You know, oh my God, arm day. Uh, but, um, you know. You your butt out like that while you're doing tricep extensions. <laughs> yes, exactly. Why do your pants seem to give you a wedgie on purpose and you paid 85 bucks for them? Um, but uh, I'm totally going to wear a pair of Lulus in my next year. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> Well, they can't see you from the waist down. For all we know, you're wearing gym sharks right now. How do you know I'm not? Exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I imagine what I want the world to be. <laughs> you know what, man? I'm going to date myself. It's, it's Remember the old juicy pants? It's that all over oh, again. Yeah. yeah, truth in advertising. I was all about that. Yeah, I really pissed off a set of people when I had a set of them made up that said furry. Uh, <laughs> embarrassed my kids because, you know, it's like, again, truth in lending, man. You should know what you're buying. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. So I think, I think to wrap this, this myth up, we would say that there is validity to um, variability and that does not mean randomness, right? So muscle confusion is not a thing. We don't want random things thrown at our muscles. We want variability, but in a, in a way that is structured and predictable so that we know it's getting the adaptations that we want and that we're appropriately balancing load across opposing muscle groups and in the planes of motion necessary to in, ensure you're gaining where you want to be gaining, that you're preventing injuries and staying on track with your goals. And that requires um, what I call malice of forethought in your programming, not something that you you just throw in a random workout generator and call it muscle confusion because you're a lazy trainer. No, that's just malice of coaching. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So muscle confusion, not a thing. Uh, your, your muscles cannot actually get confused. All right. They can, yeah. however, be dramatized and stop talking to you. And if you listen very quietly, you can still hear them weeping on a soft night. Oh, yeah. 